Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be tackling a very, very interesting topic that I think a lot of you will be fascinated by like I am and that is the topic of vintage bras and how they compare to modern bras in every way. So what started my investigation into this topic? Well, I just finished making my very first vintage bra. It's a long line 1950s bullet bra and the process of researching it, patterning it, sewing it and wearing it has taught me a lot about vintage bras, their construction, their fit and how they differ from modern bras. And the process of wearing it has shown me how much superior vintage bras are at supporting the bust even while most of them do not contain underwire. Okay, so in this video, I will be sharing all about what I have learned about vintage bras, both from my extensive research into the topic before making this bra, as well as from drafting a 1950s bra pattern, creating a mock-up and altering it, and then sewing and wearing the finished vintage bra. I will dive into why my historical bra is ridiculously supportive, even though it does not contain any underwire. And what makes vintage bras so very different than modern bras? Okay, so first of all, what makes me qualified and very interested in sharing my opinion on bras, the different styles of bras, and their supportiveness? Okay, I have struggled my whole life with bras and finding a well-fitting bra. Add in a few pregnancies and breastfeeding journeys and that just becomes even more complicated. I have a rather unusual bra size to begin with, even as a teenager, in that I have a smaller than average back or band size while having a larger than average cup size. Now, given the modern way of grading bra cup sizes so that they become sequentially smaller for a smaller band size. This has currently led to me needing to find bras in the very unusual size of a 32 band size, which is smaller than average, and like a G cup, which is obviously larger than average, keeping in mind that the smaller the band size, the smaller the cup, even when it has the same letter. But most stores do not carry this, and this, the bras that I have gotten in my proper size have just failed miserably at giving me the support that I want, that I have come to expect from having worn my own custom-made corsets for so long. And again, when I do find a supposedly well-fitting bra by modern standards, I really dislike the way it makes me look. Given the fact that I have naturally a smaller upper body in my bone structure, the way these bras make me look, it makes me look about 15 pounds heavier when I'm wearing a modern bra compared to a vintage bra or certainly a corset. And it's not because the corset is cinching my waist or making my tummy look smaller. It's because the corset is doing a much better job of slimming and lifting my upper body compared to the bra. <sighs> so all that being said, I have been making and wearing my own corsets for several years and have gotten a fairly good grasp of the pattern design and principles that go into a well-fitting bust support garment. Okay, let's talk about what makes historical bras different. So most historical bras had more of a pointed cup shape than modern bras. This may have meant being a full-blown bullet bra like the one I recently made, or it might have been more subtle in the fact that the bra might have had a horizontal seam going across the fullest point of the bra cup, which did create more of a pointed cup shape, but less dramatically so than in a bullet bra, similar to the, the silhouette that a historical corset would give. This makes sense, as at these times in history, women were just starting to transition out of wearing mid-bust corsets, which also give more of an angular or pointed bust shape, but also a very lifted and supported bust shape. Now compare that to the modern day. As I'm sure you all know, a more rounded bra cup shape is in vogue. 
in large part, I believe, due to the prevalence of form-fitting stretch clothing that many women today wear, which would show any kinds of lumps, bumps, or angles from a more angular seamed vintage bra. That's why the t-shirt bra was even invented. It's designed to be a very smooth streamlined bra that won't show lines through to the type of clothing that most modern people are wearing today. However, historical bra shapes also did work well with their corresponding clothing of those eras, which were made from woven non-stretch fabrics and often had a fit and flare shape and were just well suited to a more pointed or angular and lifted bust shape. Now, something else I have discovered through my research and personal experimentation with vintage bra shapes is that these designs of bras are actually more uplifting and slimming to women with a larger bra cup size. Now get this, despite these historical bras usually containing no underwire, which leads me right into my next point of what makes vintage bras different from modern bras. Underwire versus no underwire. As your typical modern day human being, I have had it drummed into my brain that no bra can be truly supportive to a woman of larger bra cup size without containing underwire. And I have in fact experienced this myself. I have tried wearing wireless bras, nursing bras and things of that sort and have found them sadly lacking in the support department. As such, I felt extremely skeptical when I was researching vintage bras and found that virtually none of them contained underwire. I was just like, there's no way that thing is going to be supportive to me. Like, I've got to do something here, change it somehow, right? Now, there were some underwired bras by the 1950s, but I would still hazard a guess that it was not the norm. It was just coming into fashion at that time. So despite my skepticism, I did decide to go ahead and draft a pattern and make a mock-up for a 1950s longline bullet bra with no underwire. Can you believe it? This bra was significantly more supportive than my modern underwired bras and much more flattering as well. This bra ended up giving me a very similar bust shape to the corsets I love to wear, which is a major breakthrough for me since that has been my biggest draw towards wearing corsets over bras, which is the improved bust support and shaping that the corsets tend to give me compared to modern bras. So to find a bra that can achieve the same shape as a corset while containing no underwire blows my mind. Now historical or vintage bras would usually have the same curved seam that an underwire bra would have, but it would usually just be bound with bias tape and left that way. And there was also more flexibility involved in the exact placement of this curved underbust seam, which I will talk about more in a moment. Other times, as in the case of vintage bullet bras, there were stylistic open areas left in the front band area, and there was no visible curved seam. Especially, you often see that in 1950s bustiers, they were shaped more like a corset and had interesting pattern design details that did not involve any curved underbust or undercup seam. In some cases, 1950s bras even contained overwires. This was mostly used in strapless plunge bras. And plunge overwires are actually still used today, especially for fancy red carpet style dresses or figure skating dresses, that kind of thing. And it's surprising how supportive an overwire can be, which is, again, something that my modern brain kind of tripped over. I've never even heard that concept before. Okay, so how on earth is my particular vintage bra so supportive? I chalk it up to three factors. Now, first I will give the caveat that this is a long line bra, which is known to be more supportive than a typical narrow band bra. However, I have heard from other vintage dressers that even with vintage narrow band bras, they are still more supportive and uplifting and slimming than most modern bras. Okay, so point number one that makes my vintage bra more supportive is the pattern design and cup shape 
of these bras. As mentioned before, it's inherently more lifting and slimming than modern round cup bras to have more of an angular or pointed bra cup shape. Point number two that makes vintage bras more supportive than modern bras is the type of fabric that they used compared to what's used in the modern day. Vintage bras were made almost exclusively with woven non-stretch fabric. Certainly in the cups area, it was always woven non-stretch fabric and usually woven non-stretch straps. Now, what do they use in modern day bras? Modern bras are exclusively made with stretch fabric. Even the cups, which are made of low stretch, but still stretch fabric. This is the reason that in a modern bra, you will find that once it has been worn for a while, it will become less and less supportive as the elastic of the fabric becomes tired and loses its ability to bounce back. Okay, so the third reason I believe that vintage non-underwired bras can be more supportive and slimming than modern bras is actually directly due to their lack of underwire and the greater freedom that that allows the pattern designer. What do I mean by this? Let's explain. The purpose of an underwire is to sit directly around the lower perimeter of the breast, directly in the crease where the breast meets the body. In bra making terms, this is dubbed the breast root. Now, the larger a woman's cup size, the larger this outer perimeter will be, and therefore the larger her underwire will need to be. And since the shape of the underwire completely determines the shape and size of the cup itself, the larger the underwire, the larger the cup as a whole will be. Now, of course, this is mostly common sense, but the wonderful thing about a non-underwired vintage bra is that since there is no underwire to worry about cutting into the body or the breast if it is too small, the outer cup perimeter can actually be a little smaller than the woman's actual breast. Now, in theory, this might seem a bit risky or uncomfortable potentially, but now having personally experimented with this technique in my latest vintage bra, I can tell you that my bra turned out quite comfortable, ridiculously supportive, and much more slimming to my upper body than any of my modern bras have been in the past. And a large part of that is due to the lack of underwire and the greater flexibility that this gave me as a designer. Okay, let's dive more into the topic of the types of fabrics that are used for vintage versus modern bras and the pros and cons of each. Okay, modern bras, as mentioned before, are entirely made from stretch fabric. Usually the fabric used for the band will be very stretchy, while the fabric used for the cups will be considered a low stretch fabric. Okay, so what are the pros? Why is stretchy fabric used in modern bras at all? There is a reason for it. So if you look at all historical support garments like corsets, stays, and even very early bras from the Edwardian period, they all contained lacing at the back. This lacing enabled the garment to be very form-fitting and supportive while enabling the wearer to easily get in and out of it by loosening and then tightening the laces as needed. So essentially, elastic and stretch fabric in modern bras are a modern day substitute for this lacing. They enable the wearer to stretch the garment or in order to get it around her body and to do up the hook and eyes at the back, but then the elastic will spring back and be form fitting to her body. So in the case of modern bra cups, low stretch fabric is used because it is also easier to get it onto the body and to conform to the bust shape without the wearer having to do a lot of shifting and manipulating to get her boobs into the bra cups. Okay, now what are the cons of stretch fabric? I'm sure you can take a guess at this. Stretch fabric generally equals a less supportive bra especially in the case of stretch fabric in the cups. Now it also, in my opinion, gives bras more of a shelf life, so to speak. The more they are worn, the more the elastic in the fabric will lose its recovery and the bra will therefore lose its supportiveness. Now one caveat here is that vintage bras often would exclusively use non-stretch fabric, especially in the cups. However, they did sometimes use some stretch fabric or actual elastic 
in small areas of the band, which, like I said before, does give the wearer greater ease in getting the garment on and off herself without having to put a lot of stress and strain on the garment herself or the hook and eyes. Now, when I made my bra, I just wanted to keep it simple, so I did choose to go with an entirely non-stretch option. And as based on my research, this was something that was commonly done. It just made things simpler for me as a first-time bra maker to be able to use only one type of fabric for my first bra. The fabric I used was some thin white cotton batiste that I had in my stash, and it turned out great. So what are the pros of non-stretch woven fabric in vintage bras? The main pro is that it makes for a much more supportive bra for all the reasons that we've already talked about. What is the main con for this type of fabric? As I mentioned already, the lack of elastic or stretchiness in the band of a bra can make the getting on and off process difficult. While I love the supportiveness of my vintage bra, it is more difficult to get on than a modern bra. And to be honest, it wouldn't surprise me if the top eye on the hook and eye tape does eventually rip away since it is the first one that I do up when I'm getting around my body and so it gets the most tension. If this is something that you would be worried about and you want to make a vintage bra, the solution is simple. Simply add some panels at the back and sides that are made out of a modern bra band type of fabric that has some stretch in it or use some actual elastic in certain areas of the bra band. The lack of stretch fabric in the cups, again, also helps this bra be more supportive, but it requires more manipulation on the wearer's part to get everything situated in the cups properly, as I alluded to earlier. Okay, everybody, I really hope that you were able to learn a lot from this video and definitely stay tuned for my next video, which where I will be sharing the entire process of making my own vintage long line bullet bra. The accompanying blog post will be linked in the description, so definitely check that out for future reference. I also have an email newsletter that you can sign up for on my blog, and all of my social media accounts are in the description and you can follow me there. I'll see you all in my next video.